What's going on YouTube? How are you? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Today, I'm going to show you every single thing that I know about organizing Premiere Pro projects. Super fun stuff, you know, keeping stuff organized and whatnot. I'll be covering my entire import process and export process, as well as show you where each file lives and why they live there, and how to quickly export and optimize your videos for different formats such as Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you name it. We're gonna be going over all that stuff, so don't worry. Also, I have a special gift for you video editors at the end of the video that I truly believe will help you speed up your workflow and just make things a lot easier for you. So stay tuned for that. And plus, it's free. <laughs> so Gordy. All right, we are recording the screen now. By the way, this is my first time using this little program where I'm able to see myself. Isn't that fucking crazy? All right, let's not get distracted here because it is very easy to. So first of all, I just want to go over this little template that I have. So let me just explain what goes in each of these files. You know, talk a little bit about the file structure and then we'll go from there. In additions folder, this is where all of your additional content is going to live. It's like your extra stuff, extra B-roll that you're gonna be putting on top of videos. All of that goes into here. Even just like emojis, PNG files that you wanna overlay on top of your video. All of that's gonna go into this folder. Audio is pretty straightforward. If you're using a microphone like this, I would typically have like a folder that says Deity S Mic 2. That's this microphone that I'm using. Um, and that, you know, the voiceover would go into this file. You know, alternatively, I could have um, just music in here, actually. Anything that falls under audio goes into there. Next, of course, pictures, uh, different files. You got your raw files. Those are your files that come straight from the camera and your edits go into this. Something that I also do like with client work, if I have edits that I send over and then they want me to touch it up, then I just create a folder called finals and that goes in there. But that way I always have a reference for the original edits that I had. Moving on, this Premiere project template right here is what I use to start a new project um, in this template, which I will show you later. Then in the thumbnail file, is a Photoshop template, I guess, if you will. So if you just open this, all this is, is it's just already got, you know, your format, your dimensions for thumbnails. That way you can speed up your workflow by just already having it ready for you. And then you just drag your photo into there and you move forward. By the way, this is the new office. I haven't really talked much about it. The only downfall of this thing is that we don't have any natural light in here, which is just fantastic, hence the sarcasm. And then of course, NVIDIA has all your video files. If you're pulling video from multiple sources, such as a drone, your main camera, or even like a GoPro, then all of those raw files would live inside of these folders. And a quick fun trick, if you're using a MacBook, or you're on Apple, Microsoft, Microsoft, dude, what are you talking about? If you're using, if you're using, what am I trying to say? If you're using a Mac, <laughs> when you're highlighting and moving files, let's say this is your file that you're copying. So there's a difference. You can paste the item or you can move the item. Notice the difference there. So if you're pasting it, you're just duplicating the file. But if you're moving the file, then that file is taking its original location and moving over to wherever you have it. If you just copy it, let's say, Command C, go back, Right click and then hold Alt Option, move item there, boom, there's your file. Moving forward, next we're gonna go to the Premiere Pro project and I'm gonna talk to you just a little bit about what this template looks like and why it's there. And while we're here looking at it, typically what I would do is if I was doing a new project, I would obviously rename this. So if I was doing a project about trees and I would literally just call it trees and then open it after that. So now that we have our Premiere project file opened up, I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on here. You're going to recognize a lot of these folders look similar to how our template files look in here. In your audio file, all your audio information is held there. If I have a new song, then I just simply slide into music or if I'm attaching the file for, for this microphone, 
then I'm just gonna put that into Deity, like I said earlier. In this tab, this stands for sound effects. This is all of my sound effects that I've accumulated over the years. This just helps me speed up the process by knowing exactly what I'm looking for in my sound effects, whether it be memes, glitches, fireworks, ambient sounds, or, you know, whooshes and that sort of thing. Where are the whooshes? There they are. All the whooshes there if you, if you need those done. But that's an audio folder, and then in video, all the video files go there. Typically what I would do is, let's say I'm doing this project for a buddy of mine. Let's say I've got these different, you know, video files. I'll do these because they're the smallest size. Then I would just highlight all of these videos and just drag them into video. And it'd be a done deal. It'll load up the name of the folder, have all the files in it, and I can just go from there. But for this sake, I'm gonna undo it because this is my template. And then the additions folder, this hosts all of the additional stuff, like I said earlier. Every single time I'm done with like a certain PNG file or B-roll, whatever it may be, I'll just drag it into use so that it stays organized. These adjustment layers are just thing, I just made this on my own because I was tired of every single time I wanted to do an adjustment layer, I'd have to go to new and then adjustment layer, click on it, press, press okay, da, 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 da. In this case, if this is just a 4K timeline, then I already know that this is my adjustment layer for 4K, and I can just go do whatever I need to do, and add my Lumetri color there, whatever it is. All of these assets are different things that I've accumulated over time, such as film overlays. Um, you know, we've all gotta have our film overlays, right? Just like light leaks and random shit like that also like film and grain paper textures i like to use this at the end of my youtube videos i don't know if i said this already but if you know you're going to use a certain asset again in the future why not just stick it into the premiere pro project and have it already in your project so that you don't have to you know go through and dig through finder because that's whack this is where life is just saved we're just saving all the time we can in this folder because if let's say if I filmed the project in 4K, then obviously I'm going to work in a 4K timeline. All I gotta do is just click on the timeline and then drag my video into that sequence. Uh, if I'm doing rough cuts for that timeline, I've got a specific thing for that. And likewise for just regular timeline and regular rough cuts, these are 1920 by 1080, which is just regular HD. And then when you're formatting for different things like Instagram, TikTok, I've already got the dimensions over here dedicated towards wherever, you know, that file is being created for. So if I'm creating an Instagram story, literally just click it over, double click on it, and then move my file in there and just get to work. Throughout your projects, you're gonna have to nest some sequences if you're trying to stabilize your footage. It's not in 24 frames per second. So whenever you're nesting sequences, I personally like to throw those nested sequences into this little folder so that I'm not seeing nested sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's kind of the same concept as this used folder. It just kind of organizes everything. And it's, when I, I feel for me, whenever I'm more organized and whenever things are freshly laid out on the plate, I can be more creative. I don't know. Maybe you're the same way. Maybe you're one of those people who can just like work with things all over the place, but I, I get anxiety from that and I guess it's just OCD. But anyways, different square formats you can use on here, Instagram vertical, Instagram stories, Instagram reels, TikTok. This cinematic sequence tab right here is just in case you wanna do it the right way and not add black bars this is the dimensions for it. So if you're interested in that, that's what that is. If you're familiar with Adobe's cloud, then you are then you know what dynamic links are. Dynamic links is just when you're trying to take your file or your project into After Effects to, do, to get a little advanced with it. And so those dynamic links would live there. Um, pictures live in this folder. Text titles, logos, these are pretty straightforward. You might be wondering why do I have logos separate from pictures? This is just strictly for, again, organizational reasons. Whenever you're working with clients, if they have logos, then you would wanna keep that separate from pictures, just, just to be more organized. And whenever you're looking for that logo to slap at the end of the video, then you just go straight to it. And these are like my personal things that I have, my logo and whatnot. That pretty much sums up everything in Premiere Pro. So next, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm just gonna go over briefly my export settings. I'm just gonna do the whole thing in this video. This tab right here is where you can see all the presets and 
course, this is where my presets are. Again, this is pretty self-explanatory depending on whatever you're exporting for. You're just going to click on that specific one. So if I'm doing something for Instagram and I want to do the vertical format and I've already been in inside the Instagram vertical sequence and I just literally click on this and then export that bad boy out. Um, but for some people who are just export settings nerds and just want to see what n these numbers are, this is what I typically use for my 4K, like YouTube videos and client stuff. Frame rate is always 23.976. Just, just stay there. Don't go anywhere else. Uh, progressive, square pixels, render at maximum depth. Yeah, you can see all this. I don't need to list off everything. These are the bitrate settings that I use. VBR to pass, 4060. And that's pretty much it. Wow, I feel like this, what minute are we on? We're on 30 minutes, guys. Aren't you glad that I'm gonna go in and edit this so you don't have to sit through all that? I guess I'm glad because you probably wouldn't sit through all that if I didn't edit it. All right guys, and that pretty much wraps it up. That's my entire workflow from start to finish, importing the footage and going about my files and structuring everything to where it's organized. But like I said in the beginning of the video, there was something that I was going to offer you guys for the free. If you would like to speed up your workflow or just make things easier, you could follow all the steps in this video, of course, or you could just, you know, head over to my description and uh, download these project files for yourself. So that way you don't have to go about creating all this stuff, organizing it and the whole bit. I did it for you. Head over to the description if you want to check that out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sitting through it. I hope you found something useful from this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Peace. Also, make sure you like and subscribe, dude. Clearly I'm a small channel, man, and I just need some help. I need your help. And the way you can help is to just click that like button and subscribe to the channel to show some support. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Difference.